Hello, this is Martin from the DDTSB. TSBs can save you a lot of time on your workshop and as the cars continue to get more and more advanced, TSBs becomes more and more important. But where do you get your TSBs from? I would like to share with you the difference between our TSBs and the OEM TSBs. Also, how a TSB is created and how many TSBs we have in the program. So stay tuned. The purpose of a TSB is to save time for the workshop. It's to help them avoid making a serious fault that all of us would normally make if we made this repair or this diagnostic as we normally would. It could direct you to the most plausible cause of a common fault. Also, if you have an intermittent fault, it can be a very great information to have what normally could cause this intermittent fault. So, the conclusion is that a TSB is time-saving, you will also save money and of course you will protect your image as a company. Because hopefully you are the one who could solve this difficult task that no one else could solve because you had the right information. So here we have a fault code on the engine coolant temperature sensor. We have a diagnostician who have the right skills the right diagnostic tool and also have access to the right technical data. So normally, if we would address a fault code like this with no experience on the selected car, we would take it step by step and we would track the fault, hopefully, unless the fault is intermittent or it could be a software related issue. If we had access to a TSB on this fault code on the selected car, we would perhaps start somewhere down the list based on the experience of others. So here, we need to start our diagnose. If we have no experience of the problem on the selected car, we need to find the technical data so we can measure the resistance in the temperature sensor. If the resistance is within specification, we then proceed to check the wiring. We need to check the power and ground also with load on. If we still haven't re revealed the fault, we can then proceed with the oscilloscope. Perhaps we need to take the car for a test drive or do a wiggle test to reveal any faults on the signal. If the car is 1 to 4 years old, we also need to consider if there could be an update for the control unit that could solve the problem. Instead, if we look up the fault code in the DDTSB, we suggest that on the selected car with this fault code, that you check the outside temperature sensor. On this car, it can be located in the outside mirror. So now we can make a diagnose on the outside temperature sensor and hopefully this is the fault because this is the most common fault on the selected car and we can charge for the diagnose, the repair of the outside temperature sensor and hopefully have a satisfied customer. Another example that I saw the other day on, on a post was that it was a customer who had fault S marks where the interior light didn't work. The first step was to check the fuse and of course this fuse was blown, but there was a permanent shortage so now the track began. It can be many things on the same fuse, so of course there can be a long way to track down a fault like this. There can also be a lot of disassembly involved and in this case of course we would check the wire wiring around the interior light. But unfortunately on this case the fault was in the back of the car near the tailgate. If you have used DDTSB, we would enter the symptom. This could be the fault code. You could also select a category like wiring loom or electrical system or just electrical system as, as a symptom. This would le leave you to this TSB where we show the exact fault on this car. So now we just, because of others' experience, we suggest that if this fuse blows, the first thing you need to check is the wiring to the tailgate. But it's not just the tricky electrical faults that you'll find TSBs on. We also have a lot of TSBs on mechanical problems, for example noise vibration. We all know how time consuming it can be to track down a fault that has to do with noise vibration. So we try to cover this with video and sound files to help you find this fault. And of course the older the car gets, the more of this problem you'll experience. If we receive a lot of questions regarding a specific maintenance procedure, 
we also provide you with guides where we explain how to do the procedure and how the system works. Often when I speak to a workshop about TSBs, I get the reply that they already have TSBs. But here's something I think you should know before you make a statement like this. Many of the TSBs out there that you can find has to do with some sort of data from the OEM TSB. And where do the OEM or the manufacturer get this data or experience from? And of course, this is mainly from warranty cases. So, the information that you find in an OE TSB is mainly from a car that is no old, older than two to four years old and with a low mileage. So, of course, a TSB on the Ford that we just saw, you won't find that in an OEM TSB because this will only happen when the car reaches a certain age. And this is the difference between OEM TSBs and the TSBs that we have in DDTSB. We share information about whatever we see in the hotline. So this means it can be a car that is 20 years old, but it can also be a car that is one year old. So we say that we cover the information on cars from birth to grave. The hotline that you have access to in DDTSB, they answer more than 50,000 cases a year. So of course this will give us a clear picture when there's a common fault. And when we see this, we make a TSB to take the load off the hotline. We have no intention of answering the same question when we already know the answer. When the car is made today, they are made by robots and often it's the same materials and the same quality. So when the car gets older, we can also see it through our hotline cases that it is exactly the same place on the wiring loom where it, where it goes bad. It is also the same mechanical problems and the same electrical faults. So all this becomes very clear because we have a highly precise production of the car and when we monitor it through a hotline that gathers this experience, we can make TSBs that is useful for a car even if it's 10 years old. Most of us, we enjoy finding a difficult fault the hard way. Unfortunately, it's not all customers that are ready to pay for the time that we need to do this. And often the fault is intermittent or perhaps it's software related. So there's a lot of time saved by starting your diagnose in the right end based on others' experience. So if you don't find a TSB in the program, you can always write to our hotline team. They will answer through a chat system where we can attach files or videos, or you can also do that so we can help you sort this thing. Normal response time is within one or two hours, and you will either get a brand expert or a system expert regarding on your question. So how many TSBs can you expect to find inside the program? Well, it's a good question, but to be fair, we must first decide on how we count a TSB. If you take this example, this applies to all of these car brands with different model ranges and with the selected engine. And if we wanted to, we could say on just on a Ford, there could be more than 1000 models that this information is relevant to. But in our program, we only count a TSB like this for one. And as of right now, September 2021, we have 6,500 TSBs out in the program. But it's not just TSBs that you can find in the program. We also have a lot of other features that will help you with the information that you need in your workshop. A common question that I get is what's the difference between Auto Frontal and DDTSB? Autofrontal started as a program on your PC back in 2005 and has evolved ever since. In 2017, we made the program online and we also got all the TSBs translated into English. This took almost one and a half year. Next, we had the program, we had the database, and then we teamed up with Diagnose Dan. Diagnose Dan had a lot of interesting ideas that we put into his program and especially regarding video content. In Diagnose Dance version, you have all of the same features as in Outro Frontal, but you have even more video content. You can find specific videos on a specific TSB, 
where Diagno Stan has sent it from his workshop where he's filming there's something wrong. You can also find video links from his YouTube channel uh, inside of TSBs. And further, he has an education section where he sends a lot of educational videos that are only available inside of his program. Here's an example of how a TSB is created. First, we receive a lot of questions in our hotline regarding the same subject. In this case, it was on the fault code for the NOx sensor on one of these models. So we needed to find out why do we keep getting questions about this fault code. It turned out that there could be a misunderstanding about how to interpret the fault code. If you take this fault code, it can have a different meaning if you read it with the definition from the OBD protocol, it says sensor 1, and if you take the manufacturer meaning, it says sensor 2. So of course we would all mix up this if we didn't have this information. We actually see this a lot on new cars that the meaning can deviate from the OBD protocol and the manufacturer, and it can mean totally different things. So in this case, we had a lot of mix up where they changed the wrong NOx sensor, and of course, this is not very fortunate because it's an expensive part. But we also had another challenge that we saw later on. We could have customers where they replaced the sensor, but still had faults on the NOx sensor. It turned out that the manufacturer, they, they could actually mix up the spare part number, so they gave the wrong spare part. So now we added to the TSB that you need to pay attention to the color of the wiring. The NOx sensor 1 must be gray and the NOx sensor, one, uh, NOx sensor 2 must be black. So now we have a fault code on the right NOx sensor, but you also need to consider the color on the spare part that you get. When you mix up the two spare parts, the NOx sensor 1 and the NOx sensor 2, the control unit gets the wrong message. Because they run on the same CAN bus line and each NOx sensor 1 and NOx sensor 2, they have a different ID. So, of course, if the control unit don't receive any idea from NOx sensor 2, but perhaps receive two messages from the NOx sensor 1, it would flag a fault code on the NOx sensor 2. For somehow, if you need further assistance how to measure a NOx sensor, you will always find linked bulletins to our measuring methods where we show you our tips to measure this sensor. If you want to learn more about ElectroPartner, you can visit us at electropartner.com. We have supported the independent workshop since 1989. If you want to learn more about DDTSB, you can find us on the Diagnose Dan YouTube channel, or you can find some videos on the DDTSB on the ElectroPartner's YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, and see you next time. So each sensor, they have some sort of identification, so each sensor they have some sort of ID, I, so each sensor they have some sort of ID, I, so each sensor they have some sort of ID, identification protocol when they talk.